convince yourself. Amen, 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 amen. Wow. <laughs> this is the day. This, this is, is the day, day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. We will rejoice. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made, I will rejoice. We will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. Hallelujah! We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. Amen. Well, we lost that connection at the beginning. <laughs> Amen. Uh, thank God we're back on now, woman of God. We thank God for we are connected to Christ. Amen. Amen. So sorry about that brief interruption. <laughs> Glory be to God. Hallelujah. We thank God for what God is said to do. Thank God we're back now. And um, yes. I was just talking about the fact that as we round up this month, God has been good to us this month. God yes. has been uh, terrific. God Amen. is faithful. Amen. God is ever reliable. Amen. You know, um, we serve a truthful God, right. a faithful God, Amen. the God who cannot deceive. Amen. You know, I read um, something in the... Um, I think that was Timothy, uh, I mean Titus, I beg your pardon, Titus chapter number one and verse two, I read the Amplified Version and it really blew my mind, you know, talking about the faithfulness of God. He said, God is truthful and he said, it, he said the God who cannot deceive, hmm. that's very powerful. That's powerful. God cannot deceive. It's not his nature. It's not his nature. No. But we know that that is the ministry of the devil. That's the right. devil is the deceiver, but God is true. Amen. And I like it when I when I saw that it really blew something in my spirit, you know, that God who cannot deceive. Mm. So if God gives us a word, That's if right. God gives us a promise, That's if right. God, you know, has spoken concerning us, mm -hmm. whatever God says, God will confirm. Amen. Whatever God declares, God backs it up. Amen. So we thank God because we know that our God cannot deceive. He's not a deceiver. God is not a deceiver. Amen. God is not a deceiver. Amen. You know, and this month has been explosive. This month has been great. Amen. But God is said to crown this month for us with his goodness. Amen. You know, we have people joining now. Amen. Um, as we, as we regain the connection. Amen. God bless you, Sister Jimoke. Thank you for joining in. God bless you. Can you share it on your timeline so that your friends and family also can join in and uh, be a part of what God is doing? It's going to be an amazing time. Thank you for sharing. God bless Thank you. you. God bless you, God Sister bless you. Thank you for being a partner with us. Thank you for walking this journey with us. The Lord strengthen you and honor you. Amen. Amen. So, you know, this I said we're saying this month has been amazing, has been exciting. What is on your heart? I mean, before we get into the world, what what is your, what is on your heart? What is I'm always good? I'm always excited excited when the Lord gives us a word at the beginning of this year. 
at the beginning of each month because we know that our God is the God that declares the end of a thing from the beginning. Mm. God lets us know what is his plan, mm. what he wants to do. That's right. So what we need to do is to connect ourselves with the plan of God so that we can flow together. That's right. The Bible says two cannot walk together except they be agreed. Mm. And we must always be in alignment, in agreement with the word of God for mm. that word to walk in our lives. Mm. This month God has told us that we should march forward. Mm. That means it doesn't matter the obstacle mm. it doesn't matter the barrier mm. it doesn't matter the challenges mm. it doesn't matter the obstacles anything that want to stand in our way mm. we should just bulldoze our way through mm. and keep marching forward mm. and that is what has been on my on my heart all through this month mm. it doesn't matter what it is i am going forward it mm. is a mandate from god i have received it in my spirit mm. and i will keep going forward and uh, you know that's what we've been looking at going forward when god says go forward you know he spoke to the children of israel in um exodus chapter 14 and verse number 15 after they came out of egypt mm. and on their way to the promised land they began to breathe the air of relief mm. and the, 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 the as they began to breathe the air of relief they were excited about their deliverance they've been in captivity for over 430 years that's right and the holy the power of god came and set them free mm. through the prophet moses mm. and they were released from that iron furnace that's in right. egypt All right, praise God, we're back. Amen. 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 <laughs> praise God, we're back. Amen. So sorry about today's connection, but we are going to hear God's we're word. We're going to hear God's word. But we, because we must make progress. We must make progress. <laughs> Oh my Lord! You know it's so it's so amazing. It's so amazing. So amazing. Thank God for His faithfulness. Thank God for His faithfulness. All things work together for good Amen. to them that love God, to them who are the called according to His purpose. Amen. All things work together All for good. Together this for is working good. together for our good. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. 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 All right. So. We are in the in the land of technology and we're still having problem with <laughs> internet connection. What a faithful God we serve. All right. So you see, that's what we're talking about going forward. Nothing, nothing, nothing must stop you. Nothing. Nothing, nothing. must you must not allow anything to stop no you. No interruption. No interruption. <laughs> no no obstacle, no barrier is strong enough to stop the move of God Amen. and the plan of God for our life. Amen. All right, so. I was saying that as the children of Israel began to break the air of relief, as they moved from um, they moved from uh, Egypt on their way to the Promised Land, mm. they confronted they were confronted with a, a mighty obstacle, mm. an obstacle that looks insurmountable. Mm. Uh, they were confronted with the Red Sea, the mighty Red Sea, you know. And as they came in, you know, close to the Red Sea, they became afraid. Mm. They were afraid. Mm. They were afraid for their lives and. While they saw the Red Sea and they were still struggling with that, they looked behind them and the Egyptian who had terrorized them and kept them in captivity for many years began to chase hard after them, pursuing them as if to take them back mm. to captivity. Mm. It was at that point mm. that God said to them, speak, spoke to Moses, said to the children of Israel that they go forward, forward you know. And they were God instructed them that look, God it, it was as if God was ignoring the obstacle. But where was God taking them to? That's what I want to look what I want us to look at today. You know, we have our sister Grace Nana just joined. Sister Gracie, God bless you. Sister Nana, God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for coming along. Thank you for joining in. Please share this on your timeline as as you always do. The Lord bless you and honor you. Amen. All right, so while that was on you know god said to them go forward don't allow the obstacle don't allow the barrier to stop you but what i want us to look at today is because we're rounding up this month and i know that you know i want us to be able to leave something in the mind of god's people that will be a blessing i want us to look share what what you know um what i refer to the essentials for progress the essentials for progress because if we have to make progress, there are some things that must be in us. Mm. There are some essential virtue or forces uh, or elements that aid progress. So let's call them essential elements that aid progress. Okay. So we want to Can look I at... just say something quickly okay. before we do that? 
You know, um, because I know that somebody, because this came to me earlier today. All right. A lot of people think that because they are in the will of God, they mm. are in the plan of God, they won't have obstacles. Mm. So if I have obstacles, if I have challenges, then mm. that means I have done something wrong. Mm. Or maybe uh, I am not in the will of God. I am not walking as as I ought to. Mm. Please help us um, shed light on that very briefly just to encourage somebody. Mm. If you're a child of God and mm. you're facing obstacles, mm. it doesn't mean that you are out of the will of God. Okay. You understand? Mm. Just just speak very briefly on that and then, and then we'll leave the essentials oh. with, with okay. God's people. Okay. All right. You know, that's a very powerful question. That's a very powerful thought, you know, because the Bible says we are not ignorant of the devices of the enemy. All right, let's look at the children of Israel, for instance, now. It was God that met with Moses That's right. in, in the wilderness. Amen. It was God's idea to set them free Amen. from captivity. Amen. Because don't forget, long time ago, God spoke to their great-grandfather Abraham and Amen. said, your children are going to go into bondage, mm. and they're going to be in captivity for, for 400 years thereabout. And it's going to set them free, mm. and it's going to take them to the promised land. Mm. So, God was the one that met with Moses. Moses was just, you know, in the wilderness looking after his father's in-laws' uh, flocks after he had run away as a fugitive from um, uh, Egypt. That's right. God was the one that organized their deliverance. That's right. God was the one that organized their freedom. That's right. And on their way, so you're talking about you being in the will of God and having obstacles That's and right. challenges. That's Is right. it possible? How does it happen? Mm. It was God that was taking them to the promised land. That's right. And right before, on the, re on the same path they were taking, and I like something the Bible says, you know, Bible says something very powerful, you know. It said God could have taken them through a short cut. That's a right. short route. Mm. But he chose the path he was going to take them. That's and he was going to take them through the midst of obstacles. That's it. So, you know, the fact, I, I'm going to I'm, I'm gonna say why, we, why obstacles, some reasons why people, there are obstacles. But God wasn't majoring on their obstacles. That's because it. it is not the obstacle that confronts you that can stop you. Mm. That's powerful. What can keep a person from making progress is not the obstacle because there, there will always be obstacles. Mm. There will be, always be barriers. There will always be things that want to keep you back from getting to your promised land. So the obstacles you see or you notice, the barriers that confront you, they are not capable. They don't have the ability to stop you if you don't permit them. That's right. That's right. So it's not the obstacles that keep people from their promised land. The obstacles are there to intimidate, but they don't have the power, mm -hmm. as it were, to stop the destiny or the advancement of God's people. Amen. Because if, you are, if God be for us, like the scripture says, mm -hmm. who, nothing can stop us. Nothing. If God is for you, if God is on your side, nothing can keep you back. Amen. So obstacles don't stop can't stop people, mm -hmm. but if you, except if you allow it, that's right. there was Red Sea before them, and they were in the will of God. That's they right. had not at that time; they had not sinned. <laughs> They've not committed any sin. They've not committed any. Um, uh, and, and, and they've not done anything that was displeasing to God at that point. That's you right. know, that's maybe right. we know at, at, at other times they had already begun to offend God. So um, they had begun to offend God. So you know. They, they they had issues because of their sin, but at that time, which is very good, in Exodus fourteen verse fifteen, <laughs> they had not sinned. That's right. They were still in the will of God. They've not done anything wrong, but obstacles came. Mm. But what the obstacles show in our life is to show the potency of our God. Amen. Most time, why people get discouraged by obstacles is because they major more on the obstacle right. rather than focusing on God. Mm. When you take your eyes off God and you begin to look at your obstacles, mm -hmm. you are empowering those obstacles, mm -hmm. those barriers, mm -hmm. those hindrances. To, you, are, you, are, you, are, you are empowering them against you. Mm -hmm. But God wants us to focus on him. Right. You know, somebody said, I think I heard of somebody said, if you look at a rat for too long <laughs> and you focus on a rat too long and you keep looking at that rat, if you are not careful, that rat can begin, begin to look like a lion. <laughs> and the person might end up screaming and say, oh, this is a lion. 
but it was actually a rat. That's right. Because you are focused on it. That's why the Bible says to us at all times, looking unto Jesus, yeah, Jesus. looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher mm. of your faith. Amen. So at all times, our focus should be on God, Amen. should be on His Word, Amen. should be on His promises. Amen. Take your focus off your challenges. Amen. Your challenges are trying to seek attention, mm -hmm. but our focus must be on God. Mm -hmm. You know what the psalmist said in Psalm 23? He said, even though I walk through the valley mm -hmm. of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. Right. Why would I fear no evil? He said, because for God is, is with, with me. me. Amen. God is with me. Amen. And Powerful. The God that is with us is greater than the challenges that confront us. Mm. Remember also in Second Kings, there about uh, Second Kings, um, the prophet Elisha woke up one morning, and the Bible says the servant woke up and saw a host come past Elisha and his servant, and there were so many. Mm. And the servant came and 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 you know he began to say to the he began to say to the prophet, prophet. Alas, we have been, you know, uh, surrounded mm -hmm. with so much challenges. Mm -hmm. That's Second Kings chapter six mm -hmm. and verse number fifteen. Mm -hmm. He said, and the servant said to the man of, and, the, and when the servant of the man of God was risen early, I'm reading Second Kings chapter six verse fifteen, mm -hmm. and was gone for behold, and host compassed the city both with horses and, and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, master, master, what shall we do? How shall we do? Look at the host. Look at the situation. Look at the challenges. This was Elisha. One of the things I love, and we could, what, which will help us here, is the attitude of Elisha. In the midst of all of it, Elisha was calm. He was calm. Amen. He was calm. He was cool. He was relaxed. Mm. I think that is how we have to we need to learn to solve our problems. Amen. When we have obstacles, we need that quiet confidence, mm. that restful assurance mm. that God has given unto us. Amen. The Bible says, in quietness and in confidence Amen. shall be your strength. Amen. Elisha was calm, he was confident. He was relaxed. Why? Because he knew that God was with him. Amen. Amen. Every one of us have the Holy Spirit on the inside of us. Everyone that is born again. Everyone that is born again. Mm. We have the Holy Spirit on the inside of us. That's right. But how many of us are conscious of the indwelling presence mm. of the Holy Spirit at the point of our needs? Mm. That's powerful. We have I don't know how it came about, but most believers, we have tend to over magnify the power of the enemy as if the devil is more powerful than God. Mm -hmm. As if our situation has more prevailing power mm -hmm. than the God that we serve. God is the almighty God, Amen. the all powerful God, Amen. the great God, the Amen. God that, you know, is Amen. full of might. Amen. Amen. Elisha said to him, mm -hmm. Fear not, mm. for they that be with us mm. are more than they that be, be with them. them. That's, a, that's, the, that's the mindset we need to have. That's the mindset every child of God needs to have. We need to, you know, say to yourself, that's why it says, even, you say, you know, fear not. Mm. Refuse to fear. For they that be with us are more than they that be with them. Mm. God is not looking for, you know where the God has been misrepresented. God is not looking for wood to punish. Mm. God is looking for wood to polish. God is not looking for wood to judge. Mm. God is looking for wood to justify. Amen. The Bible says the eyes of the Lord runneth to and fro the earth mm. to show himself strong Amen. on behalf of those whose heart are right towards him. He's not looking for wood to judge. Mm. No, God is not. God is looking for wood to, to punish. In fact, when God introduced, I mean to polish, when God introduced himself, you know, uh, to Moses, the first thing he said about himself, he said, I'm the Lord God merciful. Amen. 
merciful, not judgmental. Mm. I'm the Lord God, merciful. And then he went on to say, gracious. Mm. I extend grace. He said, full of long suffering. The judgment part was the last thing he said about himself. That means the last thing God wants to do is to judge a person. Mm. That's powerful. Not to condemn. But to justify, Amen. to bless. Amen. That's, the, that's the ultimate plan of God for every one of us. Amen. And that's what we need to have in our heart. I that's don't know powerful. if, you know. That's powerful. Elijah said, you know, and what the, Elijah, the prayer Elijah prayed for that his servant was, Lord, open, open his, his eyes. eyes that he may see. That's what we need to pray. At every point in time, we are confronted with our, a, a challenge and obstacle. Lord, open my eyes to see the solution mm. that you have already provided for me. Open my eyes to see the support mm. I have with you. Mm. Open my eyes to see the blessings that surround me. Amen. Open my eyes to the reality of the greater one on the inside of me. Amen. Amen. Open my eyes, Lord. Open Amen. my eyes. Amen. Open Amen. my eyes. Amen. And the Bible says, and the Lord opened his eyes and he saw. That's right. He saw. There were chariots. Mm, the mountain was full of horses, chariots of fire round about Elisha. Wow. So all the while mm. that he was looking in the natural, mm. and this is very profound, there was something more spiritual. You see, this is very profound. This will lead me to what I want, what the Holy Spirit wants even to, what I want to drop right now, and it's strong in my spirit. You know, most of us, that though we are born again, we have not tuned into the spiritual reality that is available to us. Mm. Because we are more focused on the physical and material world, mm. we neglect the spiritual world. That's right. There are two worlds. That's right. There is the physical material world, the physical visible material world, and there is the spiritual mm. unseen uh, world. That's right. Supernatural war that we live in. Mm. That's why the scripture says, Why we look not at the things which are seen? Amen. For the things which are seen are temporal. Very temporal. But the things which are not seen are eternal. Amen. Thank you. Sarah. We're back. Amen. 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 Good to have Wendy. Good to have Yemisi. God bless you. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. So, you see, while a whole lot of people focus on the visible material world, God doesn't want us to dwell in the physical. We, we, we shouldn't major on that. We should learn to look at the invisible. Mm -hmm. We should look at the unseen. Mm -hmm. Because everything that came out of, everything that we can see, came out of what we could not see. That's right. That's, That's how it came. That's right. Everything that we could see came out of what we could not see. Amen. Every visible, every visible reality mm -hmm. came out of unseen reality. Amen. And the unseen is what controls the sin. It is the invisible that controls the visible. Amen. Are you getting this? Amen. 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 It's it's so powerful. Amen. You know, as we as we as we round up this session, because what what uh, what the man of God wanted to to drop in our spirit today is what are the essential things that we need in order to make progress. But, but this question just came to my heart um, earlier today while I was studying. And uh, it just came like, there is, there is this question that needs to be addressed. Some people think because I'm in the will of God, because I'm a child of God, I'm not supposed to have obstacles. So the Lord was ministering to me that even if you are, a ch even as a child of God, you will have challenges. But, but hear what Jesus says in John chapter 16, verse 33. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In this world you shall have tribulation, mm -hmm. but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. As long as you are still on the earth, as long as you are still in the world, as long as you are still breathing in and out, challenges will come, obstacles will come, situations will arise. 
but be of good cheer. Let your eyes be on Jesus. Let your eyes be on the word of God. Let your hearts be settled in quiet confidence like Elisha did. Let your heart be settled. I know that God has me. I know that even in this situation, I will overcome. I know that God has already made a way of escape. I know that I will not be ashamed. I know that God will cause me to break through. I know that I am triumphant. I know that I am more than a conqueror. Even if you hear a negative doctor's report, I know that I am healed by the stripes of Jesus. So let that be your confidence. Let that be what you meditate on. Mm. Let that be what you are holding That's on to. Right. Let that be your confession every day. And as you continue to do that, you will go from one level of glory to the next. You will keep advancing. You will keep moving forward. You will keep going, going through. You will keep advancing in life and nothing will be able to stop you in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, I mean, we could talk about that. I mean, they, they, we're looking at our time, but that's a good that's a good thought. I mean, we could always talk about what we want to talk about. Again. No, no, no. Let's give at least one one essential <laughs> element that can that can that can cause us to keep making progress. At least, at least this is this is the first one. So let that be the second one, so that somebody can have a balanced diet. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Oh, my Lord. What a faithful God Amen. we serve. I'm enjoying this time today. It's, <laughs> it's so wonderful. Hey, people of God, don't let nothing steal your joy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, I just want to tap into what, what the thing you read in that scripture, Please. and I want you to read it again. John 16, 33, Jesus speaking. These things I have spoken unto you. That in me you might have peace. In this world you shall have tribulation. That's what I wanted to say. In this world you shall have tribulation. Because. Not maybe. Because you see. <laughs> the devil. Is referred to in scripture. As the God of this, this world. world. Mm -hmm. That's Second Corinthians four and verse four. That's right. Is the God of this world, mm -hmm. and His ministry mm -hmm. is what to kill, to steal, mm -hmm. to kill, and to destroy, and to destroy. So He's is a spoiler, mm -hmm. and is the God of this world, and He is a deceiver. So <laughs> He will continue mm -hmm. to attempt, mm -hmm. and there is no one that the devil will not attempt to. Um, To destroy mm. because he attempted even Jesus. Even our Lord and Savior Jesus. He attempted Jesus. You know, I, as I was speaking, I remember when a time came, Jesus told his disciples they should go to the other side. Mm. Amen. You know, he went to the mountain and prayed and he told them to go to the other side. As they were going to the other side, he talking about being in the will of God. Mm. It was Jesus that told them. Let's go to the other he side. He told them to go to the other side. While he went to the mountain and prayed. But while he was praying. In the fourth watch. He saw that the wind was boisterous mm. against them. They were faced with obstacles. They were faced with challenges. And they were in the will of God. And Jesus had even prayed before then. You know. He was on the mountain praying and he sent his disciple. So while they were on, he left the prayer and went to meet them. He walked on their storm. Mm. So whatever is a challenge to us, it's not a challenge to God. Amen. Whatever is confronting us, is not stronger than our God. Amen. That's why the Bible says, greater is he mm. that is in us Amen. than he that is in the world. Amen. You know, the scripture also helps us to understand that if God be for us, right. who can be against us? Mm. So, at every point in time, what we must major on mm. is the fact that God is for me. Amen. You know, and that is what gives us the strength. You know, the Bible says, whatsoever is born of God, Overcomes, overcomes the world overcomes. so we are destined to overcome Amen. we are destined to win Amen. we are destined to be victorious Amen. you know 
challenges is part of life. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, it's, it's normal. In fact, when you start seeing it as a normal thing, you know, whether you're a child of God or not, you know, whether you're a believer or not, challenges is normal. There is, you know, I mean, people, all the great, where, everywhere you see people who have succeeded, people who have, you know, excelled in life, they had uh, uh, disappointments, they had failures, That's right. they had reversals, they have obstacles. So it's normal. It's normal. It's normal. In fact, it's it's um it's deception for you to think or for anyone to think that's right they will go through life without having challenge that's even right. jesus never promised us that the, the, this is the word of jesus right here he never there's nowhere in scripture that says you'll be exempted from challenges there's nowhere i don't know in fact another scripture and i don't want to you know we want we, we, we you know don't want to bust somebody's bubble but the another scripture says many and the affliction and the challenges of the righteous mm. in fact the more you stand with god the more it seems as if you have challenges but the good news is that every challenge every test every obstacle is an opportunity is an invitation for a testimony Amen. that's how where testimonies come from Amen. why do we have testimonies testimonies are proof that we have overcome a test our test that's right so if there are no tests there can be testimonies, there can be testimonies. There are no trials. There can be triumphs. Amen. So, you see, so that's basic, you know. But, so, but, you know, people, you know, because of lack of understanding of the will of God, we, when we have challenges, we're like, oh, what have I done? You know, and that's the devil. He wants to, he's looking for a way to erode our confidence in God. That's right. Oh, if God is for you, how come you are going through this? That's right. You know, but we shouldn't run the devil's errand for him. Mm -hmm. The same way Jesus never ran the, the devil's errand. You know what the devil said to Jesus? If you be the son of God, turn these stones to be bread. Doesn't Jesus know who he is? <laughs> no, but look, 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 look at what is, what was said here. And I want you to see something very powerful here. If we could get this now. Look at this. Look at this now. Look at this. You want to read the Matthew? Matthew. Okay. Look at, I want you to see how the progression was before it went there. <laughs> this is why we need to measure on scriptures. Amen. It says, uh, in Matthew chapter 13, Matthew. I'm at Matthew chapter 3, verse 13. You want to read verse 13? Then come at Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John, no, Matthew 4. Matthew 3. I'm read, I want you to read Matthew 3, 13. Okay. I, know what, I know what I want you to okay. read right now. Then come at Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. To be baptized of John. Yes. Mm -hmm. But John forbid him, saying, mm -hmm. I have need to be baptized of thee, and cometh thou to me? Okay, now look, go to verse 16 for time. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water. And lo, the heavens were opened unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lightning upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. He went to be baptized. And the heavens over Jesus was open, That's right. and there was like a form of dope. The Spirit of God descended on him, and a voice came from heaven saying, "What? This is, this my, is my beloved son. son, in whom I'm well placed." He heard God. It was after he heard God say, "This is my beloved son," that the devil came and said to him. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Verse three. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. If thou be the Son of God. So, he was trying to... <laughs> Contradict what the Father said. Cause a doubt in his heart. Imagine right now. He just heard. He just heard. He knew. Now he heard it again. That he was the Son of God. And the devil came to tempt him in that regard. Hmm. So the point we're making here is that oftentimes mm. 
God gives you a promise. Mm. God gives you a word. Mm. God reveals his plan for you mm. and what he wants to do. And you see things contrary to mm. what God has said. Mm. That's where many people Evil. forget about what God just said That's concerning right. them. Mm. And they, began, they begin to major on what the enemy is trying to show them. Mm. Mm. And the reason people have challenges is broken focus. Mm. But Jesus said, it is written. It is written. He, he knew he was the son of God, but he wasn't going to take command from the devil. From the devil. No. Some of us, our prayer points are devil or uh, devil, devil, devil prompted. <laughs> A whole lot of people's prayer point, is, most prayer points are not prayed based on what God has said or what God is saying. Mm. Most people's prayer points are given to them by the devil. That's right. If you be the son of God, so the prayer point here will be like, in the name of Jesus, I'm a son of God. I'm a son of God. I refuse to, re to accept any plan of the enemy. But Jesus said, it is written. It is written. Man shall not live by bread alone. You see, he ignored completely what the devil was trying to get him into. So the way to become victorious is when you see obstacles when you see challenges mm -hmm. on your path to the on your path to progress don't allow those things to take your focus of where god is taking you mm -hmm. stick with what god has said concerning mm -hmm. you stand with what god has said continue to pursue god's plan for your life mm -hmm. continue to declare god's word concerning you right. continue to meditate on the word of god mm -hmm. continue to confess that word mm -hmm. continue to expect to see the reality of what God has said. Amen. Amen. That's the key to victory. That's powerful. That's the key. That's, That's the, key. the key to victory. That's, That's how key. we make progress. That's the key to advancement in life. That's the key. Because Jesus has said, obstacles will come, challenges will come, trials will come, but be of good cheer. Like the bishop has said, keep the word of God in your heart always. Know what God has said concerning you. When you know it, then you are bold. When you know it, then you are confident. It doesn't matter what the challenges may be. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand on your right hand, but it will not come near you because God has given you the victory in the name of Jesus. Keep the word of God in your heart always. Keep meditating on that word. Ponder over it. Mm. God has given you a word. I am going forward. I am advancing in life. I am the head. I'm not the tail. I am blessed going out. I am blessed coming in. My children are blessed. The works of my hand is blessed. Keep that word in your heart. Keep it in your eyes. Meditate it. Begin to speak it. And as you declare it, expect it to manifest in your life. And you will see victory after victory after victory. And you will keep overcoming obstacle after obstacle after hurdle after one hurdle to the next in the name of Jesus. Nothing will be able to stop you anymore in Jesus' mighty name. You know, I'm so thankful for the, um, the way the Lord led us today. And... Um, this wonderful dialogue was very powerful, very powerful. I'm telling and I know you, just, just, just today, the Lord was just. Many, I was, I was just in the in the place of prayer and study. Uh, you know, very, very powerful. You know, because you know the Bible says, "As many as are led by the Spirit of God, right. they are the sons of God." Amen. This is what you know will empower a whole lot of people Amen. who will be watching. You know, even though we've had, you know, um, um, the connection back and forth some obstacles <laughs> with, the, with the connection you know many will watch this later and i want i want to encourage you to please make sure you share this so that many can benefit from this and god will strengthen a whole lot of people as we as we round up this month so that you know um many can be inspired energized empowered to make progress because nothing will stop your progress Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, based on what we are saying here, you know, look at what the Bible says, talking about God uh, in Titus chapter number one. I'm reading the Amplified Version, the classic Amplified Version. It says, resting in the hope of eternal life, life which the ever truthful God mm. who cannot deceive Promise. promised. Mm before the world before the world or the ages of time began resting mm. 
in the hope of eternal life which the ever truthful God mm. ever truthful God mm. who cannot deceive, deceive. Mm. so when we get God's word our understanding or our disposition should be mm. God cannot deceive mm. the God who cannot deceive his promises are sure mm. his plan is settled mm. concerning us and he will bring it to pass. Amen. He will do what he has said he will do. Amen. That's powerful. He will do it. He will. Resting. You know, this is where we need to, you know, many of us, many of us can't rest. Many can't rest. Mm. Many can't rest in God's word. We are, because like I said, we are too uh, material conscious. Mm. We allow the material world. To rule, you know, that is what is ruining even the faith of men in the church mm. because their pursuit is after material things. Mm. We, need to, we need to pursue the Spirit of God, mm. we need to pursue the Word of God. But many have not taken time out to pursue the things of the Spirit. Mm. Many don't have time for the Word of God. Mm. Oh, like, oh, the Word of God, you know, is secondary. Mm. And you know, that, that, that one of the things I want to say because you see, at the end of the day, what matters most, you know, we read the scripture, I mean, that one of the scriptures that the Lord said, he said, a man's life mm. does not consist mm. in the abundance of the things which he, he possesses. Possess. But many think life is all about possession. possession. No, a man's life does not consist in the abundance of the things which he mm. possesses. Mm. No, that's not what life is all about. There are some things that are greater than possession. Mm. There are some things that are more essential than possession. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Luke chapter number 12 and verse number 15. Take heed, beware of covetousness. covetousness, for a man's life consisted not in the abundance of the things which he possessed. But today, as it were, the thing that a whole lot of people think life is all about is possession. possession. I got to have this, I got to have this, I got to have that. There's nothing wrong in having all those things. But the good news is that all those things have been freely given to you of God. So if God has freely given to us all those things, God has freely given, they are available for you at any point in time when you need, that's why I say, my God shall supply all my need. God will ensure those things are there. There are principles in the word of God that will help you to get those things. But don't make those things the goal for your life. Don't make possession. And you see, that's, look at what he says. He said, beware of covetousness. You see, many people's life is, are being run by covetous lifestyle. They are pursuing things they don't need just because somebody else has it. <laughs> That's where the stress is. You want to be like every other person. You want to be like this person. You want to have what this person has. You want to, you know, get what this person... No, no, no. You just be putting yourself, you know, on, on a motion that, you know, God didn't send you. There's nothing wrong with having possession. And I keep saying to a whole lot of people, you know, every time I have the opportunity, God has given unto us all things. God has freely, freely to enjoy. given unto us all things that pertains to life and godliness. He has given them to us. That's what the scripture says. Second Peter, God has given unto us all things that pertains to life and godliness. But so all things, in fact, another scripture says, all things are yours. But when you need it, it's going to become available for you. But the things you don't need, you know, talking about houses, somebody says, I want to get a five-bedroom house. I want to live in a five-bedroom house. But you are just one person. How many rooms are you going to sleep in? The hand will be in one room. <laughs> the leg will be in the other room. The head will be in the third room. No, how many rooms are you going to live in? You just need... So, you see... When you have a need for it, then God's going to make it available for you. But you are praying, Lord, I want a five-bedroom house, you know, with uh, 10 
restrooms. <laughs> what are you going to do with that? That's covetousness. Now, what are you going to do with it? <laughs> now, what are you going to do with it? Is there anything wrong with having a five bedroom house? Okay. No. If you have a family that is large enough to live in such an accommodation, then God will make it available for you. That's why I say, my God shall supply all your needs, not your greed. Mm. Not, not your covetous mind. Not your covetous mind. You know, <laughs> Jesus said, beware of covetousness. For a man's life, consider not in the abundance of the things which he has. You know, why we are supposed to be pursuing God's agenda, God's goal, we are pursuing our own self. Praise the Lord. Okay, we're back. We have our connection. We just got to round this up, you know, and trust God to have, um, you know, a better, better connection next week. We're going to make sure that it is rectified. I don't know what is what what the system is all about, but I'm sure it's going to be better for us next week. Amen. So we're just going to wrap up right now and just um, thank God for you and pray that there's a miracle in your week, Amen. this week. A miracle in your day today Amen. that God will crown this month for you with his goodness. Amen. That as you enter into the coming month, it will be a great month for you. Amen. The lines will fall onto you in pleasant places. Amen. Things will get better for you. Amen. Doors will open on their own accord for you. Amen. The favor of God will speak in your life. Amen. Whatever your needs are, we stand in agreement in the name of Jesus Amen. that our God Amen. will supply all your needs Amen. according to his riches and glory Amen. by Christ Jesus. We Amen. prophesy supernatural favor for Amen. you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 We're excited. We're looking forward to seeing you um, next week, but also want to encourage you every time you have opportunity to, you know, be a part of the kingdom of God by sowing your financial seed is always a blessing. One of the ways that God prosper his people financially is true giving when we give to the kingdom of god for the work of the kingdom we, re we receive or we reap great harvest so i want to encourage you to sow your seed today sow a seed of progress go on our website hoffman.org sow a seed of progress whatever the financial seed the lord will lay in your heart plant it on the fertile soil of this great ministry hoffman.org sow it as a seed of progress and believe god that every obstacle on your path will be cleared away mm -hmm. in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Every mountain will be removed. Mm -hmm. Every uh, valley will be filled for you mm -hmm. in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So we'll be, we'll, be, we'll, we'll, we'll be praying for you. We'll continue to pray for you. Mm -hmm. And as you also watch this, anytime you watch it, we encourage you to please share this on your timeline so that your friends and uh, loved ones and many around the world can you know, part be partaker of what God has spoken. I believe that every time God speaks, Every time God sent his word is to deliver somebody. Amen. So be an agent of deliverance. Be an agent of rescue. Amen. Be an agent of God. You are God's agent by sharing this on your timeline. Amen. So that many more people can watch it. And you've, all, you've all always been doing that. And we're grateful to God for your lives over Thank the weeks. You. you always share it and people watching it. Our goal is just to see souls saved, lives transformed, and destinies impacted at every point in time. And we can get this whole conversation going 24 hours a day until we meet again next week. So every time you go share it again and again, because we notice that every time you share it, somebody else still has opportunity to watch it again at that time. Amen. Amen. We want to pray for salvation of souls. But adventure you are watching today, you are not born again. We want to give you opportunity to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. I want you to say this prayer with me. I want you to mean it in your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus today, today I open my heart to you. I, my heart to you. I welcome you to my life. I you to my be, life. My be my Lord and my Savior. And my Savior. I thank you for dying for me. I believe you died for me. And on the third day, and on the third day you, rose again you rose again for my justification. For my justification. Thank, you thank you for saving me. For saving today, me. today, I accept you, I accept as, you my Lord as my Lord and my Savior. And my Savior. Amen. Amen. If you said that prayer, you just got born again. Congratulations. That's a very powerful decision you have made. We pray that God will continue to strengthen you and help you to grow. Begin to read the Bible. Read the book of John, St. John. Just start there and God will begin to speak to you. We also want to encourage you to find a Bible-believing church where you can go and be a part of it. If you are anywhere in Georgia, um, Atlanta, Georgia, we are inviting you to our services. Just go on our website, hoffman.org. You'll be able to see our service time. We'll be glad to have you come and worship with us. You're going to have a wonderful, wonderful time 
in God's presence. Amen. 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 We have um, Mama Debbie B just joined. Amen. God bless you, Ma. Good to have you all the time. Good. The Lord honor you and bless you. Amen. Always good to see you doing great in, you know, showing up and always encouraging us in the thing that God has called us to do. We're glad you are on tonight, man. God bless you, man. Uh, also, I want to encourage you to make sure you sow your seed of progress. Don't forget that to be a blessing to you and also to stay empowered. I want to pray for you today. If you need healing in your body, I want to pray that the power of God will heal you. Why not put your hand on your head, wherever you are, don't put your hand on your head. Father, in the name of Jesus, I speak healing. Amen. I speak healing right now Amen. in the name of Jesus to your body. Amen. I command that infirmity to go, Amen. be gone. Infirmity, lose your hold. Amen. Satan, lose your hold. Amen. I decree restoration of health. Amen. Supernatural healing Amen. is your portion. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Amen. you are healed. So let me say, I am healed. I am healed. In the name of Jesus in the Christ. Name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Congratulations. Share Amen. your testimony with us. Let us know what God has done. And for every obstacle, you know, don't forget those things that have been cleared away. Just keep going forward. Keep going forward. Dare those challenges in the name of Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. And you're going to see victory on every side. Amen. Woman of God, it's been such a great, great time. It's been an amazing time. Such Amen. a blessing to, to bring God's word to God people. We thank God. The Lord will continue to bless his people and continue to, you know, give us his word. So we look forward to coming back next week to same time to share God's word with you. Please take note of the time change. Um, 3.30 Eastern time and then uh, GMT time is to 8.30 p.m. Okay. All right. So we thank God for everyone. Amen. Amen. All right. So we look forward to seeing you um, until we come your way again next week. We want you to stay empowered and to remember that Jesus, Jesus is, is Lord. Lord.